Hello students, today we shall begin with your chapter 6, class 11 psychology. This is learning. This chapter deals with the basic concepts of learning and their applications. Let me first introduce you to what this chapter has. It defines learning as a psychological process, deals with the application of learning, different types of learning, the methods which are from simple to complex. It explains how we learn and it also talks of different factors that influence the extent and speed of learning. The different learning styles and the learning disabilities are also discussed in this chapter. For the convenience of your learning, this chapter has been divided into eight parts. The parts are as follows. First, introduction to learning and cognitive learning. Second, talks of classical conditioning. In the third part, we shall discuss operant conditioning. In the fourth part, observational learning and verbal learning are dealt with. Concept learning and skill learning are part 5. Part 6 talks of key processes and the transfer of learning. Factors facilitating learning and different styles of learning are discussed in part 7. And the final part that is part 8 talks of learning disabilities and the application of learning principles to your daily life. Here we begin with part 1, that is the introduction to learning. The objectives of this part are that after going through it, you would be able to know what is learning, understand the basic nature of learning, know what are the features of learning, what are the different paradigms of learning. Now friends, what is learning? You would be thinking it's such a general term, we use it all the time, yet how is a psychology student should you be relating to it? As a concept in journal life and as a psychological process, what is it? Well, learning begins as soon as we enter into this world. The moment a child is born, he starts to react to his environment. He learns that when I weep, I shall get milk. This is a relationship he establishes in his mind. As the child grows a little older, he or she learns to identify certain objects. More so, he would try to journalize certain things. For example, this is furniture and chair, table belong to the category called furniture. These are cars, Maruti, Fiat, Hyundai are varieties of car. So the specific and the general nature of things are known. Gradually, we also start establishing relationships between faces, events, occurrences and objects and start giving names to them. As we proceed further in life, we learn certain skills. They may be as simple as dragging a chair to sit down. They might be complex like trying to fly a helicopter or even to drive a car. In some processes, one of our sensory actions are involved. In certain other processes, more than a one sense organ works. These are all processes which go through for our entire lives and they entail learning in themselves. Then there are certain cognitive learnings that take place, that is our mental learnings. We also have capacities where we have skill gaining abilities, dexterity, how to pick objects, how to know what is deep, how deep it is, how to understand three dimensional volumes. All these are processes of learning, the acquaintance, the understanding, establishing of relationships with our environment. So friends, we would be thinking, well, this is learning and we know all about it. Then why as a student of psychology is it been given a different chapter? And there are so many concepts in this chapter. How are they related? Why are they needed? Don't worry, we shall discuss all this. Now what is learning as a concept of psychology? It is a key process to human behavior. And when we define it, we can say any relatively permanent change in behavior which is produced by experience is categorized as learning. That means no temporary change. Nothing which is as a result of drugs or fatigue can be termed as learning. Only things that are a result of practice of exp or experience are known as learning. So relatively permanent things are learning. This brings us to the next topic in this chapter which is the determinants of learning or distinctive characteristics of learning or the features of learning. 
what are the specific characteristics of learning? From the previous definition, you would have guessed some of them. Let us try and see them more specifically. The first characteristic of learning is, it always involves some kind of experience. Now, this experience might either be repeated or it can be a single experience. For instance, if you live in a hostel, as soon as sunset occurs, a bell is rung and then dinner is served. You would start relating and you would learn that the sounding of the bell gives dinner in the mess. So what do you learn? You learn the behavior of moving towards the mess as soon as the bell is rung. Now multiple times this happens and then this learning gets established. This is habitual learning. This occurs as a kind of habit. But as soon as you step out of the hostel and go to your home, now whatever bell is rung, you do not start moving to the mess. That habit is formed and it is broken when the habit formation associations are broken. In another example you might see, sometimes even a single experience is strong enough to cause learning. Maybe as a child, a person is crawling and a little kid happens to put his hand into the hole of a plug and suddenly gets a very mild kind of a current. Now this stimulus makes the person learn that this is a dangerous activity and for his entire life he learns never to repeat it again. Now only a single experience might actually cause learning and sometimes even multiple experiences cause only habit formation which is broken later. So the essential characteristic of learning is it is caused by certain experiences. The second characteristic of learning is these are behavioral changes that occur due to learning. These are relatively permanent changes. The effects due to fatigue, due to habituation, due to drugs do not count as learning. Let's take an example. Maybe you are studying for your psychology exam and a marriage is happening in your neighborhood. They are playing music loudly and you are getting distracted. Now you perform certain activities to have that music countered from your surroundings. Maybe you put your fingers in your ear or you use earplugs or maybe you put in your headphones and play another music on your computer so that that distraction of the other music is countered. Now these activities were performed by you as a result of one particular activity. These do not count as learning. Not every time while studying for your psychology exam would you insert your fingers in your ears. So this was a situation specific thing. Another thing. Maybe you are studying for an exam too late in the night and you feel sleepy. Now while reading, your head drops down to your book. This is again not learning. This is a result of fatigue. So habit formation or fatigues are not counted as learning. You might have also seen people when they are drugged or when they are under the influence of alcohol or certain other drugs or substances, they behave in a different manner. They might keep on blabbering. They might stammer while they are talking. Now this is not the usual process that they conduct themselves in their lives. Hence, even this is not counted as learning. The third characteristic of learning is, it involves a sequence of psychological events. Now this is evident, whenever you would conduct experiments in the laboratory, you would do them in a certain sequence. For example, if you want to see a list of words, how it is learned. So, this will involve four processes. A list of words is presented to the subjects. A certain time gap is given to them, during which apparently they are learning it. Then they are asked to recall. And then a certain gap is again given. After that gap, they are again asked to recall. If even after the gap the recall is maintained, we would say learning has occurred. So, there are processes involved in learning as a concept. The fourth characteristic of learning, which is very specific to it, is it is an inferred process. Learning in itself is not a process. It is inferred from something. Now this brings us to the difference between learning and performance. Are they the same? No, they are different. How? Performance is a person's observed behavior, response or action. Whereas learning is inferred on the basis of this action which is performed. Now, let us take an example to clarify this difference. English teacher has asked you to memorize a poem or say learn the poem. What do you do? You go to your desk, sit with your book open and read the poem several times. Maybe you would even like to write it down to have the memory 
strengthened. Then you go back to your teacher and say, well, I have memorized it. The teacher asks you to recite the poem. If you are able to recite the poem without looking at the book, the teacher says, well, you have learnt it. So, the performance was recitation of the poem without looking at the book. And what was learning which was inferred from that performance? The learning was the process of memorization of that poem. So, do you get it? Performance is the action which lets us deduce that learning has actually occurred. Let us come to different paradigms of learning. That is, what are the different kinds of learning? Learning occurs in many ways. There are different methods that are used for acquisition of responses. These methods used may either be complex or simple. And the processes of learning that occur might also be simple or complex. We use different kinds of ways to gain and acquaint ourselves with different kinds of processes. Some of them that are discussed in your syllabus are, the first one is conditioning. This is the simplest kind of learning. Two kinds of conditionings are there. Classical conditioning, which talks of the natural reflex actions and associations between stimulus and responses. The second is instrumental conditioning, which talks of the role that a subject plays to gain associations between stimulus and response. Then we shall talk of observational learning, which is a concept given by Albert Bandura. This talks of how human beings learn by simply observing, imitating or modeling other people around them. Then is cognitive learning, which we shall discuss in this very part. Then comes verbal learning. This focuses on the learning by human beings. How the use of language and words assist human beings to develop certain concepts in their lives. It leads us to another type of learning which is concept learning. How different things are generalized, discriminated and placed into learning. Then skill learning. How do we get dexterity, physical abilities and different skills? How are they gained in our life? So friends, conditioning, observational learning, cognitive learning, skill learning, verbal learning and concept learning are some of the paradigms of learning that shall be discussed in the subsequent parts of this chapter. As we shall discuss them, you would also be aware of their application around you. This is a very interesting concept as whatever you learn in your class or through these video lessons, you would be able to apply immediately. You would notice people having concepts drawn into their life as a result of conditioning behaviors or observations. It is a very interesting psychological concept. And you would be eager to know how it occurs, what are the determinants, why does it get strengthened, where can it be weakened. All this would be learned by you. See, learned, you cannot but escape this term. So learning is a concept that you will go through in the next seven modules and the different parts of this chapter. Be aware that from the time of your birth till you go to your tomb, you are actually engaged in learning. And so are many other organisms around you. Chimpanzees, rats, pigeons, gorillas have all been dealt with while conducting experiments or learning by psychologists. I wish you a happy and interesting journey through this world of learning and its applications. Thank you.